You're listening to the Precision Shooting Podcast, discussing all aspects of precision and long range rifle shooting. This episode is brought to you by Impact Dynamics, advanced training for the precision shooter. And now, over to your hosts. Well, hello and welcome to Precision Shooting Podcast. My name is Rusty. This is episode number 72, and I am in sunny Melbourne. Uh, sitting at uh, in a uh, the podcast studio, a new podcast studio here at Beretta, Australia. It's a uh, nice facilities you got here, Dave. Oh, it's uh, some premium stuff here. It's a highly dedicated, uh, soundproof podcast, dedicated room. Uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's that good actually. Dave has an Australian accent, but we've just clicked the filter on for Canadian, and it's uh, flicked <laughs> it across. So, well, good stuff, mate. And then, so, joining me is Dave from uh, from Beretta. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, one of the customer service reps here at Beretta. Um, so basically, if you call up with any issues or product inquiries, uh, you're probably going to end up uh, talking with me and. I'm going to be guiding you through the process. Very um, good. Yeah. And also, yeah. Brendan. Yes, um, my name's Brendan. I'm a uh, product manager here at Beretta. Um, I look after a bit of the uh, Victrix rifles, which we're going to talk about today, and mm. um, look after all the uh, information regarding those and specifications and all the good, st- enjoyable stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess that's that's what we've got sitting in front of us, mm. a couple of Victrix rifles, um, which we, we, we're going to get into because these are quite... Quite amazing looking things. No, they're, they're a work of art, almost. Yeah. So you got to, to see it. You, you, yeah. you got to see it to believe it. So it's, it's they're great here for a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Italian sculpture, Italian art. Everything is just extravagant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, just great to look at. Mm. I, think the, I think Da Vinci had a hand in uh, making this. So I, I can't confirm. <laughs> well, they actually that. found the schematic, uh, the CAD drawings <laughs> for these in his sketchbooks. I he was that, ahead yeah. of his time, wasn't yeah, he? He was. really <laughs> was. <laughs> he really was. We just had to translate everything over from wood to rope and <laughs> steel. I think they did. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you've updated it. Um, we'll uh, definitely get into talking about these ones. But, Jim, how long have you been working here at Beretta? Do you want to go first? Want um, to I'm actually quite new. I've been here for about uh, six months or so. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a bit of a lifelong dream for me to get into the firearm industry because I've been a shooter since I, I can remember even uh, walking, riding a bike, and shooting all sort of at the yeah, same time. Yeah, right. Yep. And uh, yeah, I. Saw a, an opening here, and um, it sort of all came together, and now I'm absolutely loving it and uh, nice. enjoying all the all the fun things that Breda has to offer. Brilliant. What about yourself, Dave? Well, I am. Yeah. Well, probably lifelong shooter. I think I've been shooting since I was about ten. Um, I mean, a boot ten. A boot right, ten. You know, um, growing up in Canada, I mean, a bit more access to it. So kind of just growing up, shooting pellet guns, whatnot, out in the parents' backyard, and then um, kind of graduated got into a bit more hunting with my grandfather that sort of thing and i've actually been competing on and off in small bore um rifles so the oh wow yeah that target the mm-hmm. jacket wearing sling having yep. and shoot stuff and doing that <laughs> off and on <laughs> Probably since you sound apologetic about saying it. I know, right? It's it's, it's like it's in my national character or something. You know? Do you it's walk around? With, do you walk around with a jacket on, like when you're not shooting, just to soak all soak all the attention in? Uh, well, y- yeah. Plus, they're really I'm hard to get off those <laughs> things. <laughs> they're they're insanely tight. Um, but yeah, I've been competing in that probably well since I was 13. So about. Well, what's 27 minus 13? My math, I don't know, 14 years. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Aus- Australian yeah. math, Canadian math. They're yeah, they're a bit different. <laughs> yeah. So I've been competing on and off in that for about 14 years um, and then kind of went to uni, fell out of step with shooting just because money, cars. But then actually when I – because I originally came down to Australia to do my master's. In finished. maths? Was no, it, it, no, no, no. It's okay. uh, arts, so that's why my okay. math isn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just I, following I started up on out it. in business and transferred to arts specifically for that reason. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah, and then I uh, was uh, yeah finishing up my masters down here. Had some spare time, so I want to get back into shooting, and uh, kind of took it up again. Kind of started shooting down here, which I was. I saw the laws down here. I'm like, oh my, oh my <laughs> heavens, this is something. Wow. And then uh, after getting through all the paperwork, got back into it, finished up my master's. I mean, two degrees in arts, you kind of go, what am I going to do? <laughs> so I, I stepped say, back. What, look what, at my what have I done with my yeah. life? Maybe, <laughs> maybe go back to uni and study, yeah. <laughs> study something real. Look at my hobbies, which were uh, shooting and BMX. And I said, well, you know what? I'm, uh, shooting's probably going to have a bit more longevity into it. Plus, uh, I really miss it and want to immerse myself into it here again. And Mm. Just so happened, actually, 10 years of retail and hospital experience. When a local gun store, they said, actually, Beretta Australia, you sound like you got a pretty good customer service spreadsheet. 
drop him the line, and here I am two years later. Talking, two years, yeah. Talking, uh, talking shop. I think it was wow. the voice. I yeah, that's what oh, got yeah. him over the line. Well, I heard him first time on the phone and said, yep, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> I think they keep you around just so you say a boot a, a few boot? times. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's, that's actually <laughs> why they do it. They're like, uh, can you uh, tell us about this? I'm like, oh, well, let me tell you about this. It's, it's really great, you know. <laughs> yes, no, they, um, and we just had a little bit of a look around Beretta and it's, uh, yeah, nice, nice setup, nice mm. setup. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, the, uh, the gun room is quite... Something else. We did talk about podcasts in the gun room, and I don't think that would have gone well. It just echoes like anything oh, in there. It would have been just, something there. Yeah, uh, and I think the problem is you wouldn't be able to concentrate. You'd just be too busy <laughs> yeah. looking around the walls and going, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. might buy one of those and one of those. It might be a very uh, expensive well, uh, outing for you, Rusty. I'd have to get ba- <laughs> Badco, one of the other guys in our podcast, to pay for them all because he, <laughs> he owns most companies that exist. Uh, oh, he's, okay. he's quite cashed up. So, uh, so he's the money. Yeah, he is the money. <laughs> um, we call him Cashco, and uh, we're going to have to bring him here, and mm-hmm. you guys will just... It'll be empty. The whole whole gun room will be oh, empty. Good. Yeah, the till will be full. Your credit cards will be oh, slammed. Yeah. But anyway. oh, I like that idea. <laughs> Early Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So speaking of some guns, mm. uh, I mentioned before, we've got some Victrix rifles yep. sitting in front of us. Now, these are... Well, they're new to Australia, aren't they? They're yes, they, fairly new here. Well, relatively they're, new in general. Overall. Yeah, they are. They're yeah. they're quite they're quite new. Uh, definitely under the Beretta uh, staple that we have. Yep. Um, Victrix itself, as a um, a background of the company, is about forty five years old. Mm. They uh, sort of did uh, CNC engineering work, uh, precision tooling. You know, making uh, high quality machine components. Yep. And uh, after that, the it was a family owned business, and uh, one of the family members was a F class shooter. Right. And yep. decided that I'm sick of waiting around for my F-Class custom rifles to be built and things like that. So I thought, well, we've got the machines. Let's try and make one ourselves. Right. Yep. Born so out of necessity. That's it. Yeah. Born out of necessity and, and passion. So mm. built the F-Class rifle. Uh, it shot very, very well. Some other people took notice that it shot very, very well. And, he made, <laughs> and uh, as it goes, you, you make a few more. Yeah, okay. And you sell one and then you go, well, I need a new rifle. And, that's, <laughs> that, and that one does, wins another competition and people go, where are you getting these things? That, that's it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if him and a few other group of people started competing under the Victrix name and uh, shooting together. Yeah, okay. And um, Beretta sort of saw that and said, I think that there's a bit of a future here. And mm-hmm. um, the gentleman in charge said, yeah, I think we might make these full time. And wow. yep. But after all the F class stuff, they took all the knowledge and things that they've learned and they put them into what we call the Minerva series, which is our, as you could say, tactical style rifle, which sure. is the yep. bit of the flavor of the word. Tactical. Tactical. Day, tactical shooter, military, yes. law enforcement as well, too. So, mm. yeah. all, all of that, which is what we've got sitting here in front of us. And they, as we spoke about before, they are absolutely beautiful rifles. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they look like they're, they're built to. Like a, a full principle rather than sort of to a budget. Yes, so oh, it's, say, it's they're, they're definitely not a they're definitely not a budget gun, no. uh, but uh, you wouldn't expect that from uh, Victrix. They are built for top of the line, top competition, yep. and with uh, sparing no expense. It's a yeah, good, that, you get what you pay for. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, they they look Paying like for the best, you get the best. Exactly. Yeah. They look like that sort of thing where they've just gone right. How cool can we make this? How um, practical can we make it? Put everything that we need mm-hmm. on it, and then we'll just charge whatever it's actually worth. At the end of That's it, right. you know, work it out uh, oh, at the end because exactly. there's, yeah, there's there's everything on there. Um, so take us through that. That's a bit about the history, mm-hmm. and and so then, how long have they been in in this country for? So them? we've only had them in Australia for, or probably since the start of the year. Um, right, even yep. Melbourne. Pro- the week before Melbourne Shot Show, Melbourne this Shot year, Show, they, the first ones actually arrived yeah. in Australia. I think yeah. we, yeah, we've we had them on order, and I don't think yeah, yeah they turned up right. Before. Actually, I think actually one of our reps actually had to go pick it up from <laughs> from the, <laughs> the night yeah. before the gun sh- the, gun, the Melbourne Shot Show to make sure they were there. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. They, as I said, they're relatively new. Um, we haven't done uh, too much uh, promotional work with them. We've had them sort of teased at shot shows, and um, the feedback that we've received has been absolutely outstanding. I remember in, in Brizzy, our, our stand was <laughs> just over from you guys and, and you could look over and, and it was just, there was clumps of people everywhere and then this huge one around this, what, well, uh, the, it's, they're called the, the Tormentum. The Tormentum, yes. Uh, which is, yeah, if, if you were Brisbane Shot Expo, you will remember it. <laughs> um, yep. I think I probably remember getting asked about 20 times, oh, can I hold it? Can I yeah. touch it? And yeah. it just, it's that sort of aura that just brings people to yeah. these guns. Just just they're the cool craftsmanship in it. And yeah, two days of pretty much solid, uh, just, Talking to people about the Tormentum, it was people were that interested. Mm. So t- take us through the um, the product line, mate. Okay, there's, so there's a few different ones here. Um, that's a 308. Yeah, so one side and a 
it's and a bigger. 375 uh, Shaytac on the other. Now we're talking. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so in the Minerva, which is our the, the tactical um, series for Victrix, we have uh, the Gladius, which is your sort of, I call it the, the small action. Yep. So that comes in your 308, uh, your 260 and your 6.5 Creedmoor. That's uh, your entry level, your lightest gun, but it's still obviously a piece of art. <laughs> it's it's yep. just because it, just because it's smaller and not as not as uh, large as the um, tormentum, it still has the exact same sort of craftsmanship. Now, they these come in the twenty two to twenty six inch barrel, mm-hmm. um, five round, eight round, or ten round magazines. What what mags do they take? Are they uh, proprietary they are, or are they? Uh, these ones are proprietary, but um, it does accept the Accuracy International okay good. style magazines. Yep. So you can obviously put whatever you have if ever yeah, AI that's, magazine that's if the, you need. That's the thing is um, they have. Uh, Double stage, uh, dual stage adjustable triggers, mm-hmm. uh, folding stock, detachable muzzle brakes. Uh, it's got a 20 MOA Picatinny rail on Good. the top. Yep. Uh, bipod rail, monopod rail, and that's just in the uh, most basic version. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, this is what they call a TGT. So uh, this is your, your standard one that comes out, and then there's obviously a lot more options that you can go bits ahead and with. Pieces. Bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Carry handles. That's all carry that's handles. Thing, thing, yeah, carry handles, side yep. uh, Picatinny rails, um, different uh, butt stocks, key mode four ends, all those sort of options. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's that's our uh, small small action. Yep. So it would be great for all those ranges, which obviously have the 8 millimeter um, Restriction. maximum restrictions. Yeah, we so see a lot in New South South Wales, especially. That's right. Um, mm. The second, the one of the line is just, yep. just on that one. Sorry. So the the um, the buttstock is is because um, that's the big thing about yes. these type type of rifles. You know, often people not not necessarily always a big fan of the the tactical the uh, the chassis look. But okay. the reason people go with them is is how adjustable and, and um, yes. flexible they are. And, and looking at this, the buttstock on it, you can obviously cheek. Uh, cheek piece goes up and down and is locked can oh, yeah. lock as yep. well yeah, should cheek. that go, go side to side at all or anything along those lines or is it just on side to side or? on the uh, cheek piece yeah on the cheek piece oh, I believe it uh, does in some yep. aspect there's um, a little bit of a, a little bit adjustment of an adjustment there you can oh, yeah. sort of you can rotate that a little bit you've got your obviously your vertical your horizontal yep. um, and then your length of pull does length adjust of pull back well. out and it looks like your um, you adjust length of pull so in here because it's a standard style yep Yep, and then you can also uh, your um, your pad as well can come up up and of down. Of course, up and yeah, down. to yep. bring it up to uh, to keep in in line with the, the recoil if you want to, or down where your shoulder is. So yep. yeah, that having that adjustment in there is really good. In terms of the folders, are they all folders or are they? They are all folders. They are all folders. Um, yep. Obviously, I know. Sorry, that sorry, New, New South, South Wales, Wales. <laughs> Darwin, <laughs> uh, NT. It's uh, uh, I like, <laughs> but. Um, if obviously the interest comes in from uh, those states where it is restricted, I'm I'm quite confident that we could have a uh, fixed stock version. We okay. have done it before the TAC A1. We're the actually. TAC A1. So for everyone that's had to kind of wait a bit yeah. for their <laughs> new so in New South Wales mm. and NT for their TAC A1s, it was because that was actually a special gun made uh, by Tika specifically that's for yes. those two states. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. I guess one of the strengths of, of Breda being. A, a, a proper representation of internationally, um, you guys can go back to the factory and say, "That's right, yeah. we we need this." Yeah, um, and they did it. It was and they did really it. good. Unfortunately, it was a bit of a wait, but it was one of those it's, things. I mean, at these the things end of the take day, time. They, yeah, yeah, they had to satisfy North America, Europe, New yeah. Zealand, a- South Africa. Oh, I don't worry too much sure about New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally they got to it, but mm. uh, no, yeah. it's they did it. They they, they committed and saw something there. Yeah, had a yeah. Four and that's good. That's yeah. good. So there's there's a potential that for yeah. oh, for these rifles, if, for if someone's stuff, after, they know, they know Australians yeah. are willing to buy. And yes, uh, they're willing to make it work for us yeah. down here. And it, so. it does sound like these are made more. Um, yeah, not, not, not handmade, but made in probably smaller quantities. They, they are made in smaller yeah. quantities, and they, they are s- obviously all hand assembled, all hand yeah. I was going to yeah. say it's kind of like a fine Italian wine or something. They actually date the vintage on yes. them right here. We got the <laughs> front of the uh, Tormenta made in Italy, 2017. No, yeah. no yeah. more <laughs> ringing up with serial numbers trying yeah. to find out when was my uh, shotgun made. When yeah. was this made? So yeah. tells you right there. Yeah, yeah they they are very. Um, they're a, almost an order only item, and um, gotcha. th- the idea was to create a uh, a custom gun that you would get a gunsmith to build but yeah. in a st- like a production sort of way yep. so you don't lose out on any of those qualities or any of the options mm. but you don't have the uncertainty of yeah. oh, do I have to match this part with this part when will they come in things like that it's, it's all it's, it's all it's out all of the box I was all actually talking with one of the other yeah. folks in our company here um Lorenzo, when he was over at uh, Shot Show in Vegas and he said he met the CEO because that's mm-hmm. about when right when we took these thing this product mm-hmm. on and he said meeting the CEO he's one of the most 
positive, optimistic, mm. can do kind of guys. Like you throw an idea there, it's not kind of like, eh, well, how much is it going to cost me? It's like, let's do it. Let's yep. let's see if we yeah, can make okay. this happen. It's, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> it's yeah. people to work with. So yeah, that's right. It's it's definitely not a um an assess- a cost necessity build. It's it's yep. about functionality and pretty much the be- what you want is what we can put into it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you can tell us um in terms of the action like um uh, how many bolt lugs and lift and all that sort of gear have you got okay i do have specifications i might take it out actually take if you it want out. to actually yeah, take it over yeah have a look yeah, let's do that so i guess if you uh if obviously if you haven't looked at a photo of them yet partway through this podcast um they they're a pretty they're like a, a, a chassis looking rifle but really refined um and so they they you know if you passed it uh, at a gun show quickly you just go oh, it looks like an awesome chassis rifle yeah. you go close and you go oh yeah yeah no, it's an awesome chassis rifle the flutes on the thing the yeah, flutes yeah, on the board even look elegant mm. <laughs> like. so as you can see here there are a, uh, a three locking lug yep front of the uh, bolt with uh, the yes. min- the Gladius and the Scorpio both have the single um, ejector Sure. Yeah. But um, the Tormentum has a dual, obviously, dual, yeah. the size of a ten. Sure. If you could see the bolt here, you can see the yeah, complete it's, uh, it's difference. Yeah, it's quite a it. different bolt size. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Fluted, uh, vented as well. <laughs> Dave's just broken one of them. Yeah. He's uh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to break one of these. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need some tools to break one of these. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, have a look at that. They're yeah, just a piece of art. Yeah, um, and the extended bolt handle, extended which is bolt nice. Handle, so. Obviously, um, mm. Mm, very they, good. When you feel them in the actual action, when you're playing with them, they are butter smooth. Yeah. It is definitely on the Tormentum, which is amazing for a, a gun that size and that much surface contact with the bolt. Yep. I'm just going to leave yeah. that bolt there. Yeah, it's, it's too awkward. Instead of probably to taking it in. in and out, it's just mm. yeah. slightly tapped. That is just, just yeah, nice. slides down. And so what was this, what was this one called, model? Uh, this is this is the Gladius. Gladius. So this okay. is, as I said, yes, yes and that's small action. 3865 and, and, and 260. 26, yeah, that's right. Cool. And then that, that takes us to the Tormentum. Well, we have, we have well, one more. Others, there's there's one more in the middle. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead As here. much as I'd love to jump to the Tormentum, it's... Well, you know, <laughs> it's sitting in front <laughs> of you it's there. It's, there. Hard so to, like, yeah. ah. <laughs> it's hard to ignore this thing. <laughs> it's worth the wait, that one. But um, the next one that we have in the series is called a Scorpio. Yep. And that's what I call like your large slash magnum action. So they're the ones that... It's like a 300 wind mag. Yeah, so we have it in the... 338 um, lap mag 300 wind mag and 300 norma oh that's that's good yep yeah uh, again both 22 or 26 inch barrel options okay it's uh same uh triggers same sort of chassis just bigger so yeah. it's very similar to the gladius and the tormentum just in that it, it's it, funny it's in between you call it medium in this because we have <laughs> such the large when we go to the shay tax yeah but um yeah that's your large uh, slash magnum sort of action one okay yeah and and in terms of it looks very similar type uh, similar features very and very similar uh b- available in uh black and tan as we have here um all the same options you know, carry handles key mode four ends uh picatinny rail um all extended on the side mm-hmm. again it's a uh, 20 moa rail on that one yeah cool um advanced or arrow buttstock so you've got all the, the choices on that and yeah it's we offer pretty we pretty much what we want to try and do is offer the same customization from the base uh, the yep. smaller caliber you know 308s and all the way up to the tormentum okay so no if yep. you pretty much choose the caliber you want then you can build the gun and around build it. the gun around it yeah right mm. speaking of building guns this this time <laughs> we, we're gonna have to talk about this thing because this thing's a pretty uh, huge. This is it's it's, it's it comes in weighing in at uh, twelve point uh, seven kilos, but um, right. so it's I, a hunting, I, I have hunting a f- gun. Oh, it's hunting. A definitely hunting gun. Yeah, you're going to be shooting rabbits off the back of a ute with it, you know. <laughs> oh, that's it. It's a, I call it. I sell it. I try and sell it as a sandbar stalking gun for sure. Right. Um, yep. <laughs> yep. But no, it's you can stalk uh, them through trees. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Obviously, out of my way, <laughs> tree. <laughs> well, definitely, if you want to try for bunny rabbits, you know, yep. instead of going for you know your twenty uh, rabbits in a, in a warren, you just go for the one hole, and that's it. Takes the whole burrow out. Takes it done. So that's Job it. Done. You don't have to Imagine worry about the money it. you're going to save on twenty two LRM. Like exactly. a bit of capital investment, but in the long run, it's yeah. uh, and, yeah. it, and, and it feels good while doing it. <laughs> it's beautiful <laughs> to shoot. And the rest of the bunnies that are left, if any, are deaf. Oh, that's right. It, yeah. it, it sends a message. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pack up their bags, move interstate. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Um, right. Good. But no, this uh, beautiful piece of artwork is the Tormentum. Um, mm. It's available in both 375 and 408 uh, Shaytac. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the MOA rail on this is actually 45 MOA. For yeah, smart. That's, so, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the ranges that you're going to mm. be using this is definitely not going to be, you know, 100, 200 meters. It like is. you said, it's built for a purpose, yes. and that it's, it's yeah, that's yeah. that's good sign to show that. And it shows really you they know what they're well doing thought. too. 
Mm. What magazines that tell you? Proprietary again? Uh, that one is a proprietary. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a five round there. But I do believe that there is an optional eight round for for military use only. Wow, that's uh, I don't know where the eight round would fit. <laughs> it's, I think it's a long. Uh, it sticks out a bit. <laughs> yeah, but, right. um Yeah, uh, obviously. Um, same features as the other ones. You, know, yep. you can have your carry handles, you know, your side rails. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, so they're, they're all options that you can all, go on all, and off. Well, yeah. the, with the Tormentum, that yep. comes all standard. Oh, okay. You get everything. Uh, yeah, it's all that's your top of the line. You yep. know, you pay, f- you know, you pay for the top, you get everything. Yep. You can obviously, if, if you're really interested, you could probably remove them, but uh, I haven't sold one with that's removed yet. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, um, nice. Yeah, obviously the bolt. It's it's hard to explain uh, it's through the huge. podcast uh, how it's, how big it is, how substantial it's, it is. It's bigger than our microphones. Uh, that's it. It's um, <laughs> it's yeah. No, it's fairly sizable. So if you if mm. you but you need that. You do, you yeah. do. It's mm. it's definitely a solid, strong gun. You're not going to have any problems. It's not going to be coming back in your no, face. No, yeah, not sure. at all. It, <laughs> it is definitely going to lock up and handle that um, those beautiful rounds of the three hundred seven five and the four hundred eight. Yep, and. It is just one of the smoothest bolts I've ever felt on a rifle of this size or any rifle at all. Yeah. It is uh, absolutely fantastic the way they've managed to engineer that. You can find sometimes that the um, the bigger bigger cartridges, you know, they're, they're a touch mm. rougher. Of course, um, yeah. Because it's, it's huge. Um, yeah, where's that one there? I was going to say, have you ever had uh, my Noah's over in WA? Oh, wow. Have you ever felt one of those Barnard 50 cal actions? The ones I've that, not, no. Oh, I don't know if it was a specific Barnard model I was touching, but it, it's comparable to this Barnard I was feeling where you mm. can literally just almost blow on this 50 <laughs> cal bolt and it just smoothly went. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was amazing. Yeah, and that's right. what this thing is this, like. This it's, thing sort of feels like those, um, you know, those uh, drawers where you have to, um, like you, they're a soft closed drawer. So you like yeah, throw it yeah. and then it sort of takes itself the yes, rest of the way. Exactly. I'm pulling yeah. this bolt open. It's just. It's flicking itself back. I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna put that on Snapchat or something. <laughs> that's that's quite cool. Um, yeah. Right. And so the the reception for these have been has been good. Have you got some guys out using these three seven fives yet? I don't have anyone out using the three seven five yet. Yeah. Uh, we've had a few um, few orders coming in for three hundred Win Mags. And, gotcha. Um, the, yeah. The smaller. It's gonna be a bit easy to get a hold. Obviously, of. Obviously, yeah. uh, being in Australia with um, our national firearms agreement, which is definitely not national, where yeah. every state has uh, different restrictions on calibers yeah. and hard to get. They agree to disagree. They agree to yeah. disagree. Yeah. So that's I, definitely in Queensland. I had a lot of interest of people. Loving the idea, but as soon as they found out the calibre of the large rifle, they're, they're a bit obviously and saddened because they've struggled to get uh, yeah. them passed in the in the. In the and past. then I think perhaps there's a couple of states where there'd be no dramas, but yes, folding stock is again. Then you got the yeah, folding exactly, stock. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you can have one, but you can't have the other sort of thing. <laughs> it's and yeah. and it, and that really does hamper, and it is hard to yep. obviously uh, navigate all those different regulations. Mm. You know, you try and you know we try and have an industry in this country and uh, try and support you know honest. Honest shooters, you know, people are competing for sport, yeah. you know, competing for hunting, and we almost have to design a different gun for every state. Mm. So, and it, <laughs> and the, the good thing about uh, the good thing about Victrix though is we do have the smaller calibers all the way up to the large, so whatever you are able to have, uh, yep. you can get. But um, yeah, okay. So in the in the three hundred and such, you're getting reports back now from guys shooting them. Um, we, three and I, I haven't had any reports yet. Um, Which is usually a good sign then. Yeah, We've exactly. <laughs> they're, too, they're too busy out shooting That's the right, things to be on the phone enjo- with oh, you well, telling them how good they are. They're too busy enjoying more, them. More to the point is you'll, real, you'll hear real quick if they're not good. Exactly. Well, I know yeah. definitely from because these guns have been um, in overseas, definitely yep. in Europe for quite um, for the last three years or so. Okay. Whereas as I said, we've only got these uh, this yeah, real year, fresh. Yeah. so we're still obviously shipping them out and taking orders. Well, actually, I'll tell you what, the, <laughs> the people I'm customer service here, mm-hmm. and I haven't heard a single person call complaining yet. So, no, yeah, exactly. Not at all. That's what you want. Uh, <laughs> you get people who are just like more, I said. More excited. If there's <laughs> even like a little mm. tiny scratch on the inside of mm. a chamber that you can't even see, I don't even know how people find some of the stuff they call about. Mm. But if there's an issue, people People will find it, and we haven't heard yeah. anything bad about these yet. And and yeah. and particularly on something like this, I mean, we you know price point is going to be going to be large on this. Of course, we talked about that. What are these sort of ballpark around? Your ballpark uh, definitely feel like your big tormentum. Um, your retail figure, you'd be around the uh, sixteen and a half to seventeen mark. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Your gladius, uh, you sort of around your you know seven and eight, depending on your options. And yeah. then the Scorpio fits in the middle at about about your nine to ten. Okay. So yeah. listen, they they're definitely not a budget rifle, but no, uh, we are sure. not we. We're not making any excuses well, that's of, of, of how much they are. No, no. If you, worth. if you want to, if you want something, I mean, that's the. I think the thing is, you guys have Seikos and the the TRGs mm-hmm. and tens through down to the um the forty twos, twenty twos, and then yes. if that's too much, the tickers uh, through the TAC A one down to 
um, CTRs and other other options. So, um, yeah, these are going to be the premium ones. Yeah, the oh, that's right. I was going to say what I'm yeah. doing. I'm actually starting. I'm competing my first uh, PRS comp this week and slowly getting into this, and I'm finding out very quickly you get what you pay for, mm-hmm. and mm. if you want the good stuff, you're going to have to pay for it. So Yeah. But, yep. uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's, going, yeah, yeah, that should be good fun on Sunday. Well, it's the, um, the precision service rifle um, yeah. with uh, with Jared over in Castlemay. Well, we're not far from Castlemay now, are we, actually, compared to where we normally sit yeah. doing podcasts? So <laughs> if it, I was, if I was that, actually, that would be, that was half right. an hour away from it this it's morning. It's still a couple of hours, but it's a beautiful place, Castlemay, and it's yeah. a, a good range up there. And um, from all reports, they support uh, Jared and his series qu- uh, quite well. Yeah. And, um, yeah, Dave is going to be uh, competing. And, See um, what I can do, you know. Nice. <laughs> and uh, I'll be up there as well. So both there on behalf of uh, Beretta, we'll have uh, a few of these uh, fire, fine firearms for people to have a look at. Yeah, well, by the time this podcast goes out, it will have been done and dusted. Yeah, that's so right. The results yeah. will be in. We'll so see how we went. hope you enjoyed. <laughs> yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing these, these up at uh, Apple Castle, mate. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I said the Tormentum, um, yeah, I can talk all day about it. But um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's but honestly, yeah, it's almost like a, a picture is worth a thousand words with this gun. And, yeah, uh, and we definitely will get some pictures mm. up of these because um, I know for, for many people, and be honest, many of people, this is beyond what they can afford for a gun. Of there's, course. There's no dramas. But for the, but I mean, one, to, to look at it, it's kind of cool. But for those who are in the category of, of buying guns at, at this sort of dollar price and, and want something to you know, put as, an, as a consideration, Definitely, these should be on the list to look at oh, of um, f- for whichever level you're looking. Now, this this Tormentum will move up from there. Has got one of these Steiner M M five M- XI. Yes. Right. So I've been I've been using one of the T five XIs. Now that's probably uh, they're about three grand mark or thereabouts. Is that right? Uh, the T five XIs was it you're on? Yeah, about thirty. Yeah, it's about two, that. Um, you're looking at like about that. three thousand two hundred, just a bit okay. over three thousand. So yep. I mean. Yeah, and budget around that, and you should be all in the clear when you go in and talk to your dealer or store. And and they've been they've been um, they've been really nice, and we've seen them at comps and bits and pieces. But this is the this is the M5 version. XI. Right. So this would be basically the next step up from the T5 XI. Um, we've got a three to fifteen on here. This exact scope actually we have mounted on the Tormentum is actually a special scope that was made for one of our military trials. Okay, um, yep. we'd send it out to a customer to try. It's got a Tremor three reticle in here actually too. I think so. Oh yeah, yes. Um, so you, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a price on this exact that scope. Particular <laughs> model, but in general, that yeah, the, in general, the, it depends because the reticles you can get on them. Yeah, uh, depending course. on the reticle, so I priced the highest one here, for instance, with a five twenty-five by fifty-six. You're looking at anywhere four thousand to five thousand, depending on. Okay, all oh, right, that's yeah. touch less than I thought. So yeah, okay, yeah, definitely so, obtainable. Yeah. So the question I have, um, because I've used the T's and I've seen the M's, um, what's the difference well, between the two? Uh, where do I start? Uh, well, I shouldn't <laughs> say where do I start. Because, well, there's differences because you're paying more and you're going to get more. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, mm. Out of the gate, T5XIs are made or assembled in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, but on an assembly line. M5XIs, on the other hand, actually come out of Steiner's factory in Germany. Um, and right. they're built or assembled by one technician who does it from start to finish. Okay. So it's not like yeah, someone right. paints it or puts the glass in and then it goes to someone else mm. who puts the turrets on. It's yep. one guy who comes in and his job for that day is to build this one scope. Yeah. Um, so, so he I obviously mean, works really hard because if he stuffs that one scope up, they know where exactly. it comes from. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, it's, yes, it's him on the line. That's him yeah, on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a high, high level of accountability. Exactly. There, yeah. exactly. So that's one of those things that helps with the quality control process. Obviously, I mean, all of Steiner's quality control process. Yeah processes yeah, phenomenal. are phenomenal but i mean it's just yeah, that it's gonna extra to added on and yeah, i mean yeah. people find value in that because that guy that guy he must he works at steiner he must take pride in his work it's not yeah, like they're gonna sure. hire someone there no. who's not switched on <laughs> um another thing just looking at it which i mean you can probably tell using the t5xi i guess this is really a matter of personal preference yeah but the knobs on this thing as you can see are big and beefy yeah and those tough. turrets are junkier yeah like i mean some people like lower profile turrets if that's the case maybe mm. go for lower profile turrets um but it's the, just a point of difference yeah it's just, exactly yeah. it's a point of difference yeah. i mean you get your military guys with gloves like i said this is a military scope it's designed yeah, it's for, for military spec. use and for the harsh so, conditions yeah they wanted to use them with gloves that sort of thing you're gonna and actually too one thing i personally like a bit better on the M5 XI is the magnification ring. I find it's a bit okay. easier to grab and adjust. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. Um, I mean, on that that T5, yeah. I've got the little oh, the throw, uh, lever. throw lever. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. sort of 
brings it the other way. It, but yeah. without a throw lever, you're right. Yeah. It's a touch. touch yeah. So harder. I guess that's yeah. one benefit too, having your bigger, bulkier controls. Mm -hmm. It's easier to grab, quicker to adjust. Yeah. Um, so that's certainly going to help if you need to get shots off real quick. So maybe for your PRS stuff, if, well, mm. I guess I'm going to learn a bit, bit this weekend, <laughs> but, um, yeah. say you need to change your, uh, windage or elevation mm. real quick. If you like using adjustments instead of holdover yeah. or your magnification, if you don't like to keep it on one magnification, um, that'll certainly help. Okay. So I guess to answer your question, another difference would be the controls are bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's yeah. also for the, you know, the ease of yeah. use of the operator in, you know, ad adverse conditions, you know, mm. so if you're not, you know, not shooting on a beautiful sunny day in a nice, you know, in a nice, <laughs> Sun, sunny and a nice, exactly, no yeah. wind in a nice, in a nice uh, range in somewhere in uh, country Victoria. Yeah, yeah, you, but you're shooting in like the snow, in the sand, in the mud, things like that. It it just takes that yeah. little bit extra of reliability in that in the M5. That was actually the next thing with these bigger mm. controls. The M5 XI line is going to be slightly heavier than your T5 mm. XI. Okay, yep. Yep. you're only looking at three ounces. Um, so the five to M5 or T5 XI five to twenty five, fifty six by fifty six is thirty three ounces. Mm -hmm. uh, the five to twenty five by fifty six is thirty six. So I mean. Yep. It's not a massive difference, I guess, but it's still more weight it's to help mitigate recoil if yeah. you're um, <laughs> shooting in rested positions. I mean, slight amount or conversely, might be too much weight. I don't know. Then you grab yourself a T5XI. But mm. <laughs> one of the things I noticed on the Steiners uh, that they do both on the T and, and then this one, the M, um, assuming I'm allowed to call them T's and M's. Yeah, dude, it just let's go for that so we don't, <laughs> we're not going I'll, wasting I'll time X, figuring yeah. out X's and, <laughs> and I's and, and uh, this and that and everything. So the difference uh, I've seen on here, one of, one of the features I really like about these type of scopes is the t elevation turrets on these. Yeah, and in yeah. that, um, they don't have like a, a number from you know, 0 to 10 or 0 to 15. Yeah. And then you get around to the 15 and you go again. You got to remember it. Um, yeah. th when you dial through these ones, you go past, and I think we put, spoke about this on the podcast before, but you go past 15. As you sort of click up towards 15 on the T's, they have like a little window and it changes yeah. the numbers, you know, go... 11, 12, exactly, etc. Yeah. Whereas this one here, the the whole rotation dial actually the dial goes slides up, up sort of into the yeah, top of the up. knob, <laughs> mm. so you can see yeah what rotation of the elevation turret you're on. I've Steiner they refer to it as duo scale technology actually. Righto, that's the word. Mm. Yeah. All right, duo well, scale duo technology. Scale. I, I, I am just going to say it pops up and you can see the right <laughs> numbers. But, but the, the point being that whatever you're looking at is the number that you're on. And, and no doubt listeners and, and myself included, maybe you gentlemen here as well, um, we've taken shots where we've been dialed the wrong rotation mm, out. Yep. <laughs> and then gone, well, what? Ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Right. I was about and one turn too high or one turn <laughs> too low. That's why it hit uh, yep. 100 meters in front of the target. <laughs> and probably in the last four um, four years or so, guys, uh, companies have developed indicators that, that will show you that you're on your second or third yeah. rotation. But I've I've not really seen much apart from the Steiner range where they will sh the number that you're looking at is the number, and yeah. I think that's a really oh yeah yeah you know, it drops away the indicator. Just look at the turret. It's just an ease of use. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, this is all about being user-friendly out in the field mm. Mm. so I, I, I like that feature about these ones there and i mean optically they're nice um not not you know you can't really uh com well you, you can't sort of diss the fact that they are really clear and, and we've had them we had um five different scopes out the other the oh, other week yeah yep. all side by side and, and at steiner um i mean they're all nice scopes but the steiner was in the top probably out of five probably top two there oh, for yeah. how clear they were um, and that was as the sun was going down. Yeah, that's so that, that's, that's the, great the big thing yeah, with light them is once that light yeah. starts to go down the light transmission, yep. it's oh, low yeah. like yeah, it's ah. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're good like that. So it's like seeing your favorite ice hockey player score a hat trick in the Stanley Cup. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> Are we, do we translate um, for that uh, one? Or? I was hoping Sorry. someone might pick up on that, but uh, we'll, we'll see if anyone out there watches ice hockey. Come on, go Leafs. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually... <laughs> did you say go Leafs? Yeah, exactly. Oh, dear. Not those Canadians. You don't oh, want those no. Montreal Canadians. <laughs> anyway, back to the Steiner, <laughs> Steiner um, scopes. Yeah, no, I did I did play yeah. ice hockey, so I completely ah, understood yeah, it. Yeah, I, just, yeah. you know, I just want to make you feel bad. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching your favorite footy player kick three goals in a row. There you go. I don't know. Right. Yeah. It's cool. like uh, it's, it's like watching your favorite, you know, touchdown in the end zone. You know. Imagine so you're <laughs> you're Carlton. <laughs> it's like so watching someone clean a stage. Imagine and you're a Carlton time. fan and you were born oh, we in go. 1985 oh, we and go. you see them win the grand final. Did they win it in 85? 
I hope what? they didn't. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a complete idiot. <laughs> That's where every Collingwood yeah. person is like, how dare you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm That's feeling how great looking through a yeah, star I'm, I'm feeling very left out, yeah. not living in Melbourne, understanding. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so really forgetting. Cool yeah that. that's a Although Melbourne thing. <laughs> I am looking out here in, in, in just out the window, and Melbourne's performed as per normal. Half the sky's blue, and the other half's <laughs> storm clouds. Well, four rolling seasons in. in one day. So that's Melbourne. Given, you know, we're, we're about lunchtime <laughs> well, now. With, oh, these, with <laughs> these great up, opt- this high quality start, <laughs> we'll up, those lighting conditions aren't going to matter because you're <laughs> going to be you're going to be able to see your target no matter what. See, the what. M and the M5 is actually for Melbourne. They are built specifically <laughs> for Melbourne conditions. <laughs> <laughs> Good tie-in, gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well played. Um, I don't know how we got on to whatever we're yeah, on to now. But, but, um, um, so we're still looking, it was mainly the step up, Y mm. step up from so the, the T5XI the, the to the big, M5XI. So there difference. was obviously the, if you find value in where it's assembled and yep. who assembles it, um, that's a big thing, a step yep. up to the M5XI. Your controls are another one. You're going to get a bigger, beefier scope. Um, so this thing's got a 30-year warranty on it. Now, I will say the thing, with, I mean, it's not a forever, it's not, necessarily listed as lifetime but steiner's made the assumption that when this thing goes out there it's going to perform like it would in a military or combat situation like they've assumed you're going to drive over with a truck at some point and it's still going to keep working yeah so 30 years on a scope like that is sure if if you're using it as a normal sporting (laughs) shooter you're not going to break it (laughs) Uh, it's just not going to happen (laughs) Steiner doesn't ever want to see it back yeah Yeah. well you won't they won't yeah Mm. I got told, uh, and I've learned this week, that Steiner's warranty is pretty much replacement. Yes. Um, so actually, too, because the T5XI, and this is actually exclusive to Australia, has what they call a heritage warranty. In right. other words, known as a forever warranty. Okay. Um, so your T5XI. Oh, the T5XI. Yeah, your yeah. T5XI. I think the, um, and that's s- exclusive to Australia, actually. And so it's another one of those features that the Beretta holding yep. group, Steiner, Tika, They've developed, they've, they've adapted to the Australian market. Okay. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, right. Which is, um, because I, I, one of my, um, well, actually guys who listen to the show regularly, a guy called Bronte, uh, had, I uh, was looking at buying Steiner yeah. and, and was just, uh, you know, had some questions about it, particularly with, within PRS mindset, yeah. is it durable? And whomever he spoke to, it might have been yeah. you, Dave, um, said, if you can break it, I'll replace it for you. Some of the binos we see come back here from Steiner, People have drug them across yeah. the outback behind their <laughs> ute, put them in a trash compactor, and then gone. Can it's, I do a warranty replacement? Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, 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 totally. It's even if there's a warranty period, it's slightly. We 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 want the customer to be happy, yeah, exactly. so it's it's gonna be sorted out to your benefit. Yeah, um, that's that's a good yeah. thing. Cause yeah. so, but I mean, well, even with the T five XI, if that's what your listener was looking at, it's forever warranty. And it's like the Burris. I mean, it's no questions asked. I think we posted a picture of a Burris that someone actually drove over with a yeah, truck from the 70s. And that's it. And it was just, Still. yeah, cool. We don't make that model anymore, but here's the modern equivalent. That's it. It's, and that's because Steiner and, uh, Ber- and Beretta, as you know, part, part of the holding group, uh, yep. stand by behind it. And you wouldn't offer a warranty like that on something that you, you know, you don't have the faith in, but that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, no, that's it's good, and 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 obviously, you know, in the market these currently that that is the the flavour is, is oh, yeah. optics yeah, that oh, have no, warranties yeah, exactly, yeah. and and you know, really a lot of companies if they're not offering that now aren't, aren't you can't compete, aren't no, competing, no. and and so it's good that good that they are doing that because there's other German brands that we don't have to mention that aren't <laughs> offering um, warranties like that, uh, which is you know pretty uh, pretty important. Um, and you hope, yeah, you hope you never use it. But if you ever yeah, do, if you ever do, yeah, you've at least got it because there's nothing worse than then you know going working out there's a problem with the scope yeah. and yep. then going, oh, I wonder, I wonder, because yep. if it doesn't go well, that's you know two, three, four, five thousand dollars. Well, it's it's such a big investment. Gone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm, absolutely. So. Yeah. Excellent, and we've got some uh, binos sitting over there as well, working yeah. our way through what's sitting in front of us. So, what we've got here are a pair of the Steiner. Oh, the Rangefinder binos. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Steiner yeah, right. Military 10-50 to 50 LRF binos. They're solid. They're solid. Look at these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel them. Throw them around. Throw them against the wall. Drive over them with your truck. I don't want to damage your wall. <laughs> yeah, the binos there will be fine. Yeah. <laughs> See if the next door neighbor will be all right with a yeah. pair of binos just flying through <laughs> the wall under their desk. <laughs> Scott's in the next office. I wonder if he minds if this comes through <laughs> the door. Through the uh, wall, yeah. Wow, they've got you know they've they've got some. Uh, this is going to be the hardest thing to describe. They've got some weight to them, but they don't feel heavy. 
I don't yeah. know if that makes no, no, exactly that doesn't make any mean. sense. It's, um, it's one of those cliches <laughs> like ergonomic design for better holding and maneuverability. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get that all the time, but yeah. they're heavy, but look how they sit in your hands. That's right. you know? Yeah, I think yeah. I think you're probably right. It's, it's yeah. the shape of them just yeah. sort of fits well. Um they're not they're not super light, but you'd on a harness that'd be fine. Yeah. And, and so what, they're, what they mentioned the ergonomic design and I found a feature too. Yeah. It's the rounded corners, which they actually I think said somewhere, I can't remember if it was some um government sales stuff or something I was reading, but it's meant to um not catch on corners when you're running around them uh <laughs> well, there you at go. high speeds. I don't know <laughs> if that's a feature anyone really cares about and okay. uh, Well they like would have cared uh, about it somewhere or they yeah. wouldn't have put it in. It's exactly. everything has a reason. Yeah. But, uh, well, like Rusty said, it all mm. matters because they're heavy, but they're not heavy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to leave that one what down. What is now, this witchcraft? <laughs> <laughs> um, I no, I've, I've realised that I actually don't know what I was what I was saying, but just, that's that was the first thought that came to mind. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so you've done some testing on this for in terms of distance. Yes. Um, our actually our national sales manager, he is a pair. I mean, I've played around with him a bit in the office and stuff, mm. um, but unfortunately our building's not more than a thousand yeah. uh, yards long. <laughs> <laughs> so I can only do so much. Probably anything's going to range within the length of this uh, podcast room yeah. <laughs> or That's not range because <laughs> it's going to go, why are you ranging this? I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm just turning off now. <laughs> She's going to give up on um, it. Yep. But the rated... Well, they're rated for 1,785 yards on highly reflective surfaces is what they're okay. meant to range. Um, I hope I got my seven and eights right there, you know, Canadians and numbers. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian maths is different. Uh, I, I understand that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yep. I did. Uh, Canadian maths, mate. You know what I did actually read, which, um, sorry for my moaning and groaning there and my red face here, which you can't all see. <laughs> the number I just read, which 1760 actually turns out to be, was for the next comparable product. So mm. I've kind of saved myself, ah, dug right. myself out of a hole exactly. here. These ones are actually rated to range out to 1,860. On right. The reflective so even further. That's right. So the competition, which just a good, we grabbed something, was. Uh, we just we just grabbed another range finder, something we could see, which would be marketed to maybe PRS long range, was the um, Bushnell Elite One Mile Conics. Mm -hmm. That's only rated to range out to 1,760. Yep. Um, so that earlier number. Um, and like I said, our national sales manager, he has a pair of these that he's been playing with at home or through his house out in the field. It's a big he, house. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and he said he's just out there zapping stuff mm. everywhere, and he's got even soft targets um, or low reflective targets out to 1,000. Yeah, and, and that's, that's, the, back. that's the amazing yeah. performance of it is those non-reflective targets. Yeah. Uh, yeah because you're you not always going to have that perfect spot to range from. And no. Yeah. No, no, I haven't seen too many animals wearing street signs no, or something exactly. to help you no, out. No, that's yeah. right. <laughs> And Every uh, now and then you get one, no. Yeah. <laughs> and we've come across some maybe in Canada, online, I don't know. Where they're like, yeah, I've been able to range game out to this mm. plane. So, I mean, you can point mm. them at pretty much anything and it should bounce back a reading at very insane distances. Yeah. Because um, cool. actually the laser technology in these things is, I don't know how popular these devices might be down here, but you're basically the laser aiming systems you'd find on AR yeah. style setups. Right. Um, Steiner actually recently bought laser devices. Well, not recently, a couple of years back now, but laser devices, which if you go on Instagram or look at photos of most modern AR setups and they have a laser device or a laser aiming system, they're going to have a laser device brand. Okay. Oh, that's the brand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, right. It's, it's probably know. one of the most sought after and popular brands over in the States right now for ARs. And that's, that's the kind of technology and mm. innovation they have in this in this oh, sort of product. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's guys that make lasers and really good lasers for a living. Uh, who <laughs> what a job making, making lasers. Making, making, making these, lasers. Uh, <laughs> making the uh, ranging equipment in these yep. things. So. Laser beams attached And then, too, it's also got your scan. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting yeah. note, actually. Both the M5 oh, and I, I, was waiting no I, I wanted for this. to place I burn this in um, have a laser-proof coating on the lenses. So uh, if anyone shines a laser beam through these things, it's uh, not going to send your retinas on it. What, is, what, <laughs> it, what, what did, it, what did uh, Scott Allen uh, say exactly? Uh, to quote the national sales manager, if a laser beam shines through these optics against your retinas, it's not going to explode Load your you. eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's yeah. a feature I hadn't considered before. <laughs> I guess if you're doing a PRS comp and the, there's laser beam shooting, shooting at everywhere, you as a shooter, know. you know? There's, that's, that's a new stage for next yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> Avoid the laser beams. <laughs> Avoid the laser beams going in your eye and exploding your eyeballs. But um, 
It's going to be called Ball Busters. Yeah. Oh. And there's going to be lasers everywhere. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be a good stage. Looking forward to that one. Oh, that'll be, that'll be an intriguing one, that one. Yeah. Um, but I guess actually back to the uh, things you might use <laughs> or need to worry well, about. You, you well, you will At this point in time. Well, yeah. that was the primary thing, wasn't it? We're done, Ali. That's, that's oh, it. Laser. Well, actually, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> the that's why buster. when people call, they're like, what, what's so great about these binos? I'm like, well, do you ever worry about laser <laughs> beams <laughs> when you're out hunting? <laughs> because let me tell you. We've got that covered now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But another feature too with the laser stuff is it has your scan mode. Yeah. Um, and so I mean, just it goes out it. insanely. Yeah. So yeah, you track it on something and keep following. And you're like, oh, and it keeps five updating. Meters, five. It, it, it yeah. Yards, whatever. Yeah. Whatever distance we're using down in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers are challenging. Yeah, Dave, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh yeah, it's cut. Yeah, and it gives a reading back to you as you scan. And we're so. in the Southern Hemisphere, so our numbers are actually upside down. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've noticed that, actually, yes. Yeah, so yeah. It really confuses me with eight, because yeah. I'm like, is that an eight? Or <laughs> is it a eight? six or a nine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> six, nine, there we go. <laughs> as it throws around. See, I'm not even good recognizing the shapes and numbers. Eight and eight, it wouldn't matter. Six <laughs> and nine, there we go. Now, that's confusing. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. But, um, and then two on them. Now, in terms of warranty coverage on these, actually, this is actually a relatively new product, these binos that Steiner's actually mm. only recently started marketing to the civilian market. Gotcha. Yep. Um, so as of now, um, standard, pretty much a 10-year warranty on everything. Yep. Um, but to be honest, we've only sold two of these to the civilian market to date. Yep. And that was... Think back. Well, they came out an hour ago, so that's not bad, yeah, exactly. man. <laughs> done well. Um, but we never had a warranty query on them. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think because we did sell them a couple of years back and there's been no issues so far. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically, when Steiner, and I mean, they would have sold these in the States, yeah, yeah, everything sure. like that, and they just haven't had warranty queries on them yet. That's so. good. That's <laughs> but, good. like anything Steiner. But yeah, I'm sure that attitude would come through that if exactly. someone has a problem. You, well, you like I was told, if it's Steiner, we're gonna, it's going to be look sorted after out it. in your favor. Um, mm -hmm. So you definitely can be comfortable buying yourself a pair of these that you're covered. And like I said, it's like the M5XI. <laughs> if you break it, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I want a video. I, yeah. I want a video. <laughs> Please send us a video for entertainment purposes <laughs> and we will replace it because you've done something amazing. <laughs> yeah, nice. But, uh, yeah. Nice. So, like I said, it's going to be that great after-sales support with these things as mm. well. And are you um, looking forward to this Sunday, Dave? I am, looking, I am actually looking very forward to this Sunday. Yep. Um, I was doing some drills, actually, the <laughs> other week. Oh, like look out. He's practiced. My, my, my main <laughs> you're well in You're well in front for me, then. The pride of Beretta yeah. is on his shoulders we'll now. We'll see what we can do. My... my uh, because, like I said, I have competed on and off in the target rifle stuff. Are you wearing the same jacket? Oh, God, no. Not oh, this, I'm not disappointed. This, uh, not in this Australian heat. <laughs> 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 I had enough time in that tin shed of shooting with a fan blowing on me. Jesus. <laughs> but um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see how I go because uh, I quickly found out that doing some of these drills, it's a completely different ball game to yeah, what I'm okay. normally used to competing okay. in. So, I mean, 15 oh. minutes to shoot 10 shots is... Uh, I found out very quickly is quite different to what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Yeah, <laughs> I've not even I've not looked at the course of fire yeah. yet, but I'm yeah. I'm imagining it's probably a, a little faster than that. Oh, it is most definitely faster. But mm. hey, mm. So, honestly, <laughs> when you're loose, it's did you have a good time? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Which I'm hoping for. I mean, it'll be yeah. fun. It'll it's, be good. It's always going to be a learning experience, you know. Mm. Uh, so I'm very excited for to check it out and. Uh, Learn maybe what I have to do next year's season. So what's happening? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what are you going to be running this uh, weekend? So mate? what I'm running is my uh, Tika T3 environment, mm -hmm. 308 factory stock. Um, I'm running my Burris XTR2 actually on it. Yep. Um, two to ten by forty two. So some people have kind of been, well, actually, everyone I've talked to who kind of knows PRS doesn't necessarily. Oh yeah, they're like, yeah, you can run that quicker target acquisition, everything. Yep. The only people who kind of go. Two to ten at long distances. <laughs> Are you insane? I'm like, well, th no. Th and then I'm kind of explaining yeah. quick target acquisition. You, yeah. It's front focal plane reticles all going to be the same. So enough about the technical stuff. By the way, Burst XTR2, really good scope for the price point. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, yeah, running my T T3 Varmin, um, factory stock on it um, with a Burst XTR2 on top. Yeah, cool. Um, so, yeah, it's treated me treated me well so far um i think i've been keeping track of my cold bore shots the last five times at the range i've got three out of five yeah okay. on a 30 centimeter gong out of 500 so okay 
Mm, I'm not, mind nice. you, that's rested um, with the bag underneath, bipod with bag underneath three or stock. Uh, yeah, right. I can't remember off the top of my head what you got to do the cold bore off at this comp, but. Um, I have no idea. Yeah. But um, um, let, let's see how I don't even go. know if I'm zero, to I, be honest. I, I found. Um, <laughs> It's almost more fun like that. <laughs> yeah, someone said, oh, did, you know, yesterday, go, do you want to snip down the range in zero? I'm like, that takes the fun out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be guessing. Yeah, see where I guess, see where the wind takes it. Yeah. <laughs> but found the biggest challenge probably going to be the unsupported prone stuff. Mm. But uh, mm. yeah, see how, see how we go, like I said. Can only try. Well, that's, Have some fun. And it's it's a good example of, of and I spoke with, we were at Smith's Outdoors last night doing a yeah. presentation on this sort of gear. And, and uh, one of the lads there was shooting, he was shooting a... Uh, I think probably very similar, actually. Yeah. Um, similar sort of setup uh, with, I think, the burrows on top of it. But I guess, it, you know, if you want to get involved with this sort of comp, you don't have to go out. Um, I mean, you'd, you'd love to shoot it with one of these rifles sitting in front of us. But oh, yeah. Of course. But um, whatever you've got. And exactly. Lots, yeah, lots yeah, of right. guys have got tickers. Yeah. Heaps. Of, and, you know, ticker with, particularly with a heavy barrel. Oh, mate, it's get, get into it. Oh, know, yeah. just My only up. complaint is that it's maybe too heavy, but other than that, I mean, that really doesn't matter at the end of the day because these the rifles are going to be about five times well, I was, heavier. I was going to say, <laughs> on Sunday, pick my rifle up and then, then whinge about the weight of your gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say, too, not to plug other people's marketing, or, but, I mean, Vortex, they did that video with the Ruger American and the 3 to 9 by 40 simple scope on it making shots at 1,000 meters. Like, that's it's Exactly. Exactly right. And I yeah. think the, the big thing, and, and we, we've seen that over the, this last week, yeah. is mm. that... Um, there's some cool stuff around, yeah. but you, you you are much better, and, and yeah. you'll find this. But you've competed before, so you'll know this. That so you'll go there on Sunday and you'll shoot and win, lose, or yeah. get disqualified, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you will have like a list of stuff. Mm. Um, you have like a list of stuff that you go, all right. So if I want to improve and not get DQ yeah. this time, um, here's all the stuff I can work on. Yeah. And, no, exactly. And, and then, yeah, you know, then you can start tweaking your equipment for it as yeah. well. So, well, it's one of those things you can give a carpenter the best tools in the world, but doesn't mean he's going to make a good house. You know, mm. it's yeah, it's mental attitude. Yeah, especially you want to go ones out. I've met. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go out. You're willing to learn. You want to have some fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and that, that's what it's a yeah. lot about. You don't have to break the bank to get into this uh, sport, into the series. And um, no. the more people that actually use their rifles to enjoy them you know yeah. to actually shoot boy not not just you know sit in the safe and maybe go deer hunting you know yeah. once a once a year nothing wrong with going no, deer no, hunting no, once no, a year no not at all. <laughs> no 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 not saying it's just something wrong. to compliment it's that. just to, to get more use totally you, that's what i mean you don't totally. have to have a, a specialized rifle to uh, to do this no you, you, as you said you're well that's standard. actually the beauty of it because over in prs i can't remember the exact name but they have that factory class mm, that's or right. whatever it is yeah um, yeah where production it's literally yeah. they have a limit on how much you're allowed to spend on your equipment and and look i won't i won't give anything away because uh, I don't know anything confirmed, but uh, we've just been in Canberra and talking with uh, Solomon from Prison Service Waffle, who sort of, you know, he sort of heads it up, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're looking at, at making some changes to try and make some of the classes even more accessible, okay. yeah. less equipment available to you. Yeah, exactly. So you, it, there's not as much money to get started. Mm. So I think uh, one thing that I've sort of really picked up and I'm sure we've banged on about before in this. And I know we've just talked about some really nice gear. And, and for those who are in a position to be able to grab it, it's definitely worth looking at. But by the same token, exactly what Dave's doing. Get something that's capable mm -hmm. and just get out there and give it a crack. And just enjoy it. In time, yeah. you'll, you'll know what stuff you're looking for in, in the equipment you want to buy. And it'll make you really round, like a really good decision when you do make that yeah, decision. Exactly, you know um, what you're well. doing. You don't go out and mm. spend a bunch of money and then end up not being able to hit the broad side of a barn. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, yeah. Build yourself up. Yeah. Mm, absolutely, and, and start with something. Because, like I said, it can be intimidating when you look at some of the photos of these, and you're like, "Oh my god, look yeah. these guys are shooting! Oh, how am I going to work with this?" Yeah. <laughs> but, but everyone starts yeah. somewhere, and that's yeah, the exactly. thing. These people have, you know, a lot of people have been competing for years and years and years, and have done the research and have done, yeah. you know, yep. seen what works for them and what doesn't. Yeah, but. You're only going to know that until you start. Get out. Get That's out. Right, get out there and shoot. Actually, what was it too? <laughs> Wasn't the guy... Um not saying Tigas aren't a fantastic and accurate rifle, <laughs> but I did see a lot of AIs, a lot of really high-grade rifles, like match military sniper rifles in the Vortex Cold Steel Open photos. Uh, there, yeah. there was a splattering of everything. Um, and, and I think you'll probably find, if you look through... Uh, uh, and we've got the data on it. We need to get that data off Greg and actually publish it. Yeah. But tickers were... You can expect tickers, Howells, Remy's mm. yeah. uh, are all going to be in the 
in the, the predominant oh, uh, presence. Yeah. There was a lot of yeah, there. I think you find that often they're hard to recognise because they're dumped into other chassis, yes. other stocks and bits and pieces. So it could have been me just um, uh, seeing the Yeah, action. you, you yeah. sort of, yeah. And, and that's, you know, just the back then takers. that, that Tech A1 wasn't around. So mm, it's yeah. not so common to see that sort of yeah. gear. So it will be interesting. And, and you know, I'm sure you guys, from, from a company point of view, will follow it. And, you know, from a shooter's point of view, definitely be following it. Um, what happens with the PRS and because yes. what we well we will do as part of it is document equipment used mm-hmm. every shoot and then you know, end yeah. of the year publish that information you see these trends happen because we've seen that in the US mm. and, and seen what's happened and uh, we'd like to uh, you know get that data here as well but they they sort of uh, progressively added the data that they went so they've got they haven't got some stuff from the first few years we've we got the advantage of seeing what they did and go right well we're going to keep data from oh, day yeah. one no, exactly. um, and then yeah be, be able to see what what's present what's happening but it's that um, sort of information that just helps grow both yeah. uh, you know both the sport and mm. you know and our sort of business and all the other or just the community in the general whole, down here exactly yeah. gets rid of that uh well the whole stigma yeah. down around firearms down here because mm. mm. that's i mean a lot of thing too i mean you can get someone who might be anti-hunting, but they might not necessarily be anti-gun. I mean, yeah. I've got a couple of vegans shoot at my rifle club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I mean, it just grows that market mm. and shows people this is a sport. It's safe. It's fun. And I you can go out on. and literally just put holes in paper or make metal go ring. <laughs> at really long distances. Like is, that, is, that a weird, is that a weird Canadian uh, noise? Is that a, <laughs> yeah. You must have different steel in Canada. <laughs> yeah. it, oh, it's a lot colder, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't go... <laughs> blow, it's a lot colder and tighter, so pitch. it rings out at higher pitches. <laughs> and, that, and, that's, uh, and Dave's right, and that's the yeah. great thing about... About uh, the steel sh- or about uh, the Well, shooting. about the ping, you know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> about the shooting as a sport, it just it doesn't discriminate. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Anyone can shoot young, old, male, female. It doesn't matter what background or what you, what you do mm. in life. It's, it's not a... It's a sport anyone can get into. And it really is, yeah. The, and the precision, uh, the service rifle series and precision shooting in Australia is just going to grow. It is. And yeah. uh, as Beretta, it's it's great that we can uh, provide rifles for, to suit all the way from the low end up into the Victrix and, you know, from yeah, the exactly. lower end scopes in the Burris all the way up to the M5XI. Yeah. And it's all about um, giving people choice mm. and getting people in at the ground or supplying people who have been doing this for years and years. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. So, guys, if you uh, if you have any questions on these this stuff we talked about here, or even just looking you know, around if you're researching some products, give Dave a call here, and sure I'll Brendan be, here be happy to <laughs> yeah. uh, Brendan be happy to talk about um, uh, the Vitrix rifles particularly. But yeah, you know, give Dave a call, ask him about some scopes, and then ask him to say ping for you, yeah, exactly. um, <laughs> and uh, see if he can repeat that. And I expect and, the phones to <laughs> spike after this, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> just say it. Say can, it. Can you, you just say it. You're make be, the noise. You're gonna be crank calls all the time, just like. Ping. Hang up, done. That's it. That's all it's going to be. And most of them will be from him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm starting to doll now. We'll have to do like a, get a discount code or something going, you know. <laughs> Just ping. Yeah, quote ping three yeah. times. Quote yeah. ping, quote ping at your local dealer to receive a, this or that voucher. Yeah, free hat. Yeah. <laughs> free hat. A free signed photo of Dave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that is the prize you really want. <laughs> it's almost sort of bad go level of signed coffee cups that we yeah. uh, seem exactly. to be sought after in, on our podcast but uh, very good guys well thanks for your time thanks for having a little look we're going to take some photos of this and uh, throw these Perfect. up well, on the site thanks for coming around here Rusty no, yeah, it's yeah, good yes. to have you here thanks at Beretta you today and, and, and um, uh, you're always welcome back and when yeah. we've got something awesome. new come back and have a chat and see all the interesting things sounds good guys enjoy this half melt oh yeah, yeah. that's right uh, yeah. Oh, and actually the clouds have changed sides now it's blue sky to where it was cloudy and it's cloudy to where it was uh, they've changed around so we put on a little bit of sunshine and the wind's picked up <laughs> luckily I'll be able to arrange things <laughs> oh that's good <laughs> and then when it gets low light actually, conditions actually even if those good. clouds <laughs> move over and so, well yeah it should be able to yeah. Yeah. all low range unless they're really all low thick. light <laughs> it's kind of an industrial area out here so I don't really know what's in those clouds but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be careful if it's raining yeah <laughs> thanks for your concern gentlemen alright very good guys uh, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, thanks for uh, thanks all for listening yeah thanks very much Rusty. cheers see you thanks for listening to the precision shooting podcast to continue the discussion check out our facebook page and for more information head to our website www.precisionshootingpodcast.com.au this episode was brought to you by impact dynamics advanced training for the precision shooter